it's Tuesday afternoon, which would be April 14th, I think. Um, it's supposed to be lows in the 20s pretty much all this week, so I'm not feeling particularly ambitious, but I'm going to try to get a couple things done here today yet. Um, first thing on the list, I'm going to use this tractor, and we're going to pull the water trailer um, up by the shop, get all the uh, oil and the hubs checked and tires aired up on that, and then kind of get it parked by where we normally load the sprayer for the fields um, that are close enough that we just fill it home. Um, we've got the three-point hitch contraption on here now, so um, we're just going to use that to pull it up here. There's no water in the tank at all, um, so it doesn't weigh too much. Uh, however, the trailer itself is heavy enough that uh, it's not any uh, lightweight, I guess. It's uh, like a 22,000 pound capacity trailer, so I think it itself weighs probably seven or so. Um, I'm just going to raise the jack up enough that we don't drag it across anything getting it up there. Probably good enough, and I'm probably going to want that block to park it on later. Looks like I have at least one other one there. May need to find some more, but that'll get us started anyway. So I'm going to pull it up to the shop and check all the tires to make sure they have air in them. Um, most of the stuff that I spray will be fairly close to home and just will fill here, but we do have one farm that's a ways away that we'll pull the trailer over to most likely. Um, so we'll try to get everything ready to go so that we can just hook on and roll when it gets time to spray over there. Um, so just go through and check uh, both sets of duels on both sides and then there's a rubber plug that you can check the oil and the hubs um, to make sure that the bearings are going to be lubricated going down the road. Alright, got tires all aired up. Um, there was one that was a little lower than I would have liked to see, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Um, the oil on the other side looked pretty good, but this side seemed to be a little loose, or sorry, a little low. Um, so I'm going to try to top it up. Um, not sitting on real level ground right now, so we may kind of check things before we actually pull this to the field also. Um, Being, I think. So just a rubber plug that you can pop off with a screwdriver. Ended up with a little bit more excitement than I wanted. Um, so to be clear, I would never try to pull this down the road or anywhere loaded um, with a clevis like this. I need to go about a total of 500 yards, so I thought I'd be okay to do it the easy way, but uh, coming down this hill, uh, the trailer was sort of pushing and I think spun that around and pinched it somehow weird and uh, snapped it which I think the clevis was kind of sprung before, so it probably had a weak spot. And now we're going to do what I probably should have done to begin with, which is find the actual clevis hitch and swap out the receiver on this three-point mover deal. Hmm. Well, I also noticed that that uh, tube is cracked on the bottom. Maybe we should take a look at that sometime. Again, this is something that we don't really use pulling things down the road, and that's not going to reach. Hmm. We have to figure out something else here. Because the cross pin hole is too far back to get a cross pin through. Well, I looked around, and the only other clevis that I can find at the moment is this twist clevis. And that's not going to work at all. So, we're going to go from sketchy to sketchier here. And I'm going to put this ball adapter thing on. And I'm going to hook that through the pedal and drive really slowly and very carefully and try not to lose the trailer. I don't have very far to go and it's pretty much flat to uphill at this point. So I think I'll be okay, but hopefully I don't regret this. I think we're into position without further incident. Um, so I'm going to get some blocks under the jack and get this guy set down and figure out what's up. After some brief consideration, I decided to do some more shed tetris rather than move those totes around. Um, I need to do a little bit of contemplation of exactly what I'm going to try to do when because that might affect 
uh, what tote I want on the trailer and when I want it on there. Um, and it would be better to only have to move it once because this the tractor that normally goes with the forklift is also the sprayer tractor, so we have to unhook stuff to use the forklift once we're hooked up. Uh, anywho, uh, I need to get, basically there's a car trailer back here that probably isn't really very visible, but it's behind the sprayer, uh, and then this little soil saver chisel plow. Um, so basically this needs to go in the very back, and we need to get this out and probably put the car trailer where it's more accessible than in the back corner. Um, so we're going to do some rearranging. So I think we got stuff rearranged in here. Uh, I'm going to close this shit up and probably put the sprayer in the shop. So I'll have to move a few little things and uh, run the door up. Uh, but I think it should go in there without too much trouble, so that's kind of the game plan. Uh, it looks a little rainy-ish, um, so we might be about to uh, the end of my ambition for the day. Uh, well, I just got hooked up to the sprayer, and I don't know if it'll show up in the video or not, but we got freaking snowflakes. Wonderful. Notice that this is a sprayer and we're not in the shop, and that's because I changed my mind. Um, I realized that I have a chemical tote sitting in the back of the shop, and if I put the sprayer in there, I'm gonna have to move it to get the sprayer out or move the sprayer to get the tote out. Um, so I decided maybe it would work better to put it in here. Um, that way, I won't have anything on the tractor. Uh, actually, I think I can even just stick the tractor here other than you have to put it putting it in the shop. Um, but then I can just pull this around with a little 950 John Deere. Um, it's a little three-cylinder Yanmar, Yon Deere. Um, and uh, as long as it's fairly flat, we can push it around, push the sprayer around with it. Um, so I can kind of be able to get it out of the way um, and be able to push it in and out with it. And not have this tractor tied up and not have it in the way, at least in theory. Usually we end up moving things four times more than should be necessary in one way or another. Well, it's Wednesday morning, and the sun is shining now, but I think this is coming off the trees, if you can see the flakes, but we had some freezing fog uh, overnight, and uh, I don't know if there was some snow with that or if it was all from the freezing fog, but the ground was white and it looked pretty freaking miserable out earlier this morning. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of a late start. Uh, I'm probably going to work on some stuff in the shop for the short term here, and then get the planter pulled around and start working on getting the monitors and everything in on the corn planter. Working on the body molding on the corn drum, so I got this one finished up and got the pieces cut for the second one here. Um, so I just made a calibrated stick that I've been using to measure them out and then I can just use the uh, tin snips to chop off next to the end pretty accurately. Um, so I've got all of these cut um, that should be enough to do the second drum. Uh, I'm probably going to do half of that and then maybe do a little bit more testing to see if it actually makes a difference or not before I put the second half on. So one of the minor problems that I have to get straightened out uh, with getting the corn planter hooked up to this tractor is uh, making a bushing for the hitch. Um, so apparently the hammer strap on the other tractor was taller than this one. I mean, it's homemade, so I'm sure it wasn't done to any specific uh, tolerances or specification. Um, so I did find some more of the same tube we used to make this one, um, so I just need to make one shorter. I had cut this one down but I'd kind of rather not just so that we have it if we ever hook the tractor back or hook the planter back up to the other tractor. Um, so we're gonna head towards the lathe. We've got the uh, piece of stock chucked up in the lathe here. Um, this is a old South Bend I believe lathe that dad got an auction sometime and it's not really appropriate for anything tight tolerance because there's quite a bit of play in the bearings um, but it works fine for hogging out metal for doing stuff like this. It doesn't have to be a really nice finish. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, face off the front edge of this and get it halfway square.
All right. So on that last pass, since I was uh, cutting all the way around or making you know long shavings, um, that means that I was taking something off clear across, and that means that this face should be square to the chuck on the uh, lathe. So at this point, we will pop this out of here, maybe with two hands, and then I'll go cut this to length or close to length on the shop side. So I'm going to open this up and reclamp it, and then we'll start making this a little bit narrower on this side. I'm not sure if I'm perfectly centered. I don't have very much to grab onto with the jaws back here, so I kind of did the best that I could. Again, not something that has to be super perfect. Well, it's about 7 o'clock now, and I uh, got a moderate amount of stuff done this afternoon, not without some obstacles, I guess, but um, got the bushing finished up. Um, I just went in and got a different battery, so I didn't take much video for the last little bit because the battery was getting low, and I think that maybe was causing the camera to crash, but got the bushing done. Um, we're all hooked up, got the pump attached to the PTO. Um, we worked on getting the... Uh, Openers all zeroed, which they didn't really need too much adjustment. I mean, they were set with new openers four years ago, so we adjusted a few of them a little bit, but um, kind of made sure that that was all right. Um, however, in the process of that, we managed to blow a hydraulic hose. Uh, I noticed when I was hooking stuff up that there was kind of some nicks in the outer jacket, and that blew out as we were doing the thing. So, um, although annoying, that gave me a chance to try out my reusable hydraulic fittings here. So I bought these as a way to sort of do an emergency repair and I thought that it was a good chance to try them out because I can just pull the pieces back off and uh, use them for real later. Um, I w will go get a new hose because, I, I mean, although this is a permanent fix, I'd a lot rather have a new hose on here and be able to put those back in the box to have them for other purposes. Um, but they're actually pretty slick. You just, they're like the ferrule thing here is left hand threads inside um, so you sort of cut where the hose blew out or I actually cut about a six inch chunk out because there was kind of a couple spots next to each other that I think maybe had been rubbing against the front edge of the tube for the tongue there or something but anyway you cut the hose um, as straight as you can and then left hand thread the outer part on and then the actual fitting piece uh, has right hand threads that go down inside and it has like a really deep uh, hose barb type thing that goes inside the hydraulic hose um, and then this is just there's like a this would be a male JIC type fitting and this is a female so then you can tighten them together once you get the fittings on um, and I got kind of half inch quarter and three eighths which are the most common hydraulic hose sizes for kind of general purpose stuff um, I mean, obviously this would be a larger hose but hopefully we're not going to blow those out 
uh, but mostly just got it kind of as an emergency repair type thing. Uh, also got uh, an assortment of different adapters and stuff. I don't think I took any video of that, but um, actually we can walk in and kind of show you. When I was putting in Hydrosan a few weeks ago, I blew out a hose on Saturday afternoon, and there weren't very many options of places to go to get a new one made, and it ended up costing me a bunch of money, uh, a lot more than it should have. So I decided that was a good reason to try to get enough stuff that we could kind of emergency repair a little bit on our own. Um, so I got kind of a variety of different adapters and 90 degree fittings and like different sizes to uh, be able to either use extra hoses that we have or I got a few hoses um, in increments that I can sort of, you know, use a four foot section or an eight foot section or a four and an eight foot section to make a 12 foot section or whatever. Um, and then a variety of adapters so that hopefully even if it's, even if the hose is not the right fitting for whatever blows up, um, I would have an adapter to be able to kind of patch things together temporarily until I can get somewhere to get a hose made to fix it right. Um, and then also got some of these uh, reusable fittings. So this one I believe is like a three eighths. Um, but it has kind of a coarse thread down inside that back nut thing. So like most manufactured hydraulic hoses are crimped onto the hose, um, but the crimpers are very expensive, and it's kind of difficult to do a good job with anything that's not expensive, so this was kind of the solution that seemed like it would maybe avoid a lot of downtime without having a huge capital investment, like a $2,000 hose crimper or something. Um, so you just cut the hose off and then this is left hand threads down inside of here so you screw that onto the hose and then um, just kind of get the hose up to the bottom of the, the internal or the threads for the other part and then this part wedges clear down inside the hose and fits tight enough that it pinches off the metal braid um, and uh, is liquid tight even at extremely high pressure so you can have a reliable hydraulic hose repair. The other sort of wild card or interesting development I guess is that we have a winter storm watch tomorrow and they're currently saying five to nine inches between tomorrow and tomorrow night. Um, so I hope that that doesn't actually come to pass but we'll see. Um, with it being mid-April at this point my hope is that it'll sort of the models won't be accurate uh, and it'll actually turn out to be maybe more liquid precipitation or that the where the snow lands will maybe move so that we don't quite get that much quantity but we'll see I guess um, but the high tomorrow is 32 or something like that I believe also so it's going to be kind of not very pleasant to work outside um, so I'm going to kind of try to get a couple more things done today at least um, I've got the the wiring kind of run up into the cab, um, but I need to figure out a way to get the monitor mounted, and I need to get uh, a power connection for the air compressor that runs the row shut offs, because that needs to be a pretty high current uh, tap. So I need to get some heavy wire. I, I'm not sure if we have any, so I may have to make a hardware store run sometime here anyway. Also need to get some other stuff kind of hooked up in conjunction with the the row shutoffs and the marker control box. Uh, I need to get a, a switch figured out for that. I have the stuff to do it. I just need to kind of rewire a few things and find a place to plug it in and everything. So um, I'm going to work on that a little bit tonight or at least kind of assess the situation and figure out how I'm going to go about some of that hopefully. Um, and then I may end up either doing some stuff in the shop on the combine or working on some stuff in the storage shed tomorrow inside where it's not snowing. But we'll see what happens.